my guys. Today, on this beautiful day, I am planting tulip bulbs and I'm planting allium. My tulip bulbs, I'd forgotten that I even had. They were gifts, uh, one from my sister and this group, the Rembrandt mix. Um, they are from my friend Jennifer. And what we have with these tulips, I'm planting them up in these raised beds because they are not, not deer resistant. So I've never had deer up in these raised beds and I'm hoping that they don't find my tulips up here. They don't mind, you know, daffodils, they won't bother them, but tulips they will. So I'm putting them up here and they'll be beautiful up here. Um, these get, these are the um, Rembrandt mix and they get uh, 22 inches tall and they are late spring, yeah, late spring, early summer bloomers. So they're gonna be beautiful. And I'll put, I'll have a better picture I can put on the screen. So I've gone ahead with my, um, bulb digger and put them in the ground five inches deep i've got a marker here so i don't forget and so all you do with any bulb you put the pointy side up and then you can see yeah pointy side up and you can see where the roots were uh, i may have a better picture of that but these are pretty pretty easy to figure out where the roots were roots were there and the pointy side up. So all you do is you put those in the depth that they recommend, cover them up. And I know it's going to be raining, so I'm uh, not gonna water them in. Let nature do that. And this is as easy as it gets, particularly if you can pre-dig um, your holes and mark where they are. So there are, my Rembrandt mix in the ground. That's a tiny one. I'm gonna put two together, see what happens. I've got my marker. I'll leave that there. So let's go to the next set of tools, which is just right across from Raj. This will be so pretty in front of the, the poet uh, Clematis too. Let me scoot right in front of you, Raj. These are, I have four of these. These, I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Banja, B-A-N-J-A, Luca. Beautiful yellow and red. They're gonna go right in here. Put the marker. Holes are made. And I'm gonna stick pointy side up. Oh, it's so easy on Reg when I have these holes dug. And on the viewers, because it's just, repeat 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 i do have daffodils in here too and these two are late spring early summer and the height i think they're 22. <sighs> these are zone two through eight uh which is cool those were four through eight and they get 20 to 20 inches tall so won't those be pretty i'm looking forward to them the last bulbs we're going to be planting today are in the garden they're my alleys that we put against the fence these are the uh, big impact alliums, and they're going to get, gosh, I wrote 24 to 36 inches tall. Uh, I have some of these already. They're a mixed color, light purple, dark purple, uh, and white. Same thing applies. The holes are, oh, the holes are a little, what are they, four inches for these, which I thought was interesting. No, six inches deep, so I've already done that. And they're zones four through eight. Same thing, just pointy top up and the root side down. So we'll get those in the ground. They'll be beautiful back here. The other thing about um, these alliums, their foliage gets kind of messy looking. So you want these planted among perennials that are going to come up and hide that their yucky looking foliage once it starts to um look bad and their tops i love alliums because they stay up all season long once they bloom they hold their color and then they also even when they dry they look beautiful okay that's oh just have to put the soil over these They're, that's how easy that is and I love how tall their blooms are. And uh, last year I used a little 
spray paint on their dried <laughs> blooms and they looked gorgeous all season long. So that's just a little hack you can do. I, someone else had done that on uh, YouTube and I thought I'll do the same. So I've got one more pack over here and they're ready to go too. And these are the purple sensations and they get 24 to 36 inches tall too. And I have um, a, a alliums right in this area. So I needed more here. Same thing. These are four zones, four to eight and um, four to six inches deep. So we've gone ahead, done that. And I've got these ready to go. So this will make a beautiful statement in here. Yes, indeed. They will get covered up by the foliage of these taller plants in front. And uh, I'm just looking. Do you see them? Great, 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 great. I see them now. So far, I haven't had a problem with rodents getting in here. These are deer resistant too. Oh my word. That makes it easy for someone who fights deer to some degree. This is because they smell and taste like an onion. And uh, that's what, all right, I think I've got them all planted. So the bulbs are planted. Now the next thing I'm going to do today while I'm out here is I am edging this lamb's ear along this border and I'm going to put it in a pot. And if any of the viewers that live close by want some lamb's ear, um, this is the Stachys Byzantina. Um, it's not Helen Von Stein, which has a bigger leaf. This is um, an old style, but I'm just digging this up today. And it's going to go in a pot, <clears throat> keep it through the winter. There's some soil in this pot, some pot, uh, topsoil. I mean, compost, yeah. And uh, if anybody wants some of this, it's such a hardy thing to have. I've already gone through and tried to dug this. So I'm going to dig these clumps up and I'll show you where they're going to be stored through the winter if someone doesn't come by and get them. I have two daylilies too that are in pots that uh, uh, anyone's welcome to those. But this is how easy it is to control. I, I like this border to look really more groomed and it smells good too. It has more of a minty smell. So I'm going to pack this one full and I've got another pot, which I'll do. And plus it'll, I want my heucheras to look, to have more of an, uh, an appearance here. These wonderful Dolce Wildberry ones. So you can see I'm going to continue this border. And there we go. See how much better that looks when they're away from that heucra. Okay, so I'll show you where this is going to get stored until somebody wants it or till next spring. And this is how easy it is to, if you have an area, a flower bed that's protected and this flower bed is this isn't a flower bed it's my compost pile but it's protected on all four walls from wind and uh, the wind can be the hardest thing on plants that are stored in pots but i'm just gonna i am just gonna kind of like heal these in my day lilies and these um here we go. These are Indian Giver, and I'll put a picture on the screen. Beautiful purple uh, day lilies. So they're just going to get stuck in here. A little soil around them. So they stay nice and toasty in here. And I've done this for years. I've got this fern back here that I dug out. And so I will have this little compost area full of plants for anyone who wants to come and take some home come on so i'll finish doing that i i know i need to clean off the morning glories but i want them again they're not as dry as i want them to get because then it's easier to take care of so 
that's a lot getting done today in the garden. I will go back through, see if there's any bare spots on the soil and throw some mulch on it. So get out in your gardens, have a good day. Just text me or message me if you want any of these plants. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Gardening on the West Fork.